Good morning to all of you who listen me from various destinations. I greet you all once again in the most blessed name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And this morning, I would like to share you a class on the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, how it becomes the foundation of Christianity or Christian belief. Before I make, I would like to make the comment that Christianity is not a blind belief as some people think. It's a belief which is based on a historical foundational truth, which is the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible very clearly tells us that 2000 years ago, God of the heaven who visited this planet Earth lived here on the face of the Earth, territory and a half years nearly. And at the end of his life, he was crucified on the cross of Calvary for the remission of our sins. We have the narration of the life and testimony of our Lord Jesus Christ from all the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And especially, Apostle John is clearly discussing in his writing the deity of the Lord Jesus Christ, while the other three were speaking about both the deity and the humanity and the service of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to the given evidences in the New Testament, after the death of our Lord, his body was received by two great men of that period. One was Nicodemus, the one who came to visit the Lord Jesus Christ by night time. And the other one was Joseph of Arimathea, who was also one of the ministers in the Roman region in those days. These two came and collected the body of Jesus Christ and gave him a burial according to the pattern of the Jewish people. We read about the decorative arrangements that these people have made for the burial of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that body was literally buried in the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea, which he had given for himself. As the gospel narrative tells us, we know that the entrance of the tomb was sealed by the Roman seals as for the command of Pilate, the Roman governor. And also a, a large stone was placed in front of in front of it so that his body should not be stolen off. Even the Jewish people they had complained to Pilate that this man was a deceiver because while he was alive, he had stated that if, if you kill me that I will rise up on the third day, and now his disciple may prone to steal his body by night. And then later they will claim that he was resurrected from the grave. And the latest deceit shall be much more than the first which he claimed. Therefore, they compel him to, uh, to secure the tomb even after the burial of our Lord Jesus Christ. But the Bible very spectacularly tells us that on the third day morning, that means Sunday morning, when those holy women who visited the tomb, to apply the frankincense, the, 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 uh, to, to, to apply the ointment on the tomb according as they have prepared, they found the stone from the entrance of the the, uh, the stone from the entrance of the tomb was moved off, and uh, the tomb laid empty. And Christ Himself witnessed His resurrection to these women first, and He said. That Go and tell my disciples, as I have mentioned before, that I am resurrected from the dead this day. 
we read that those women they ran fast and they went into the the other disciples and they conveyed them that Christ was risen out of the grave. So I would say this morning that the doctrine of resurrection is the foundation of the New Testament. If there is no resurrection of Christ, then there is no New Testament, then there is no church and there is no resurrection of the saints and our faith have no value at all. In the New Testament, it is about 104 times the word resurrection is mentioned by the Holy Spirit of God. The 104 times of his repeated mentioning in the New Testament gives us the emphasis of this phenomenon, how the resurrection of Jesus Christ stands as a historic event in relation to the New Testament narration. Christianity is the only religion, in fact, which claim a living originator. When I say that Christianity is the only religion which claim a living originator, for example, Buddhism was established by Sri Buddha. Buddha died and gone away from this world. And his body lies the place where he was buried. Muhammad was the founder of Islamism or Islam, that he too he died and his body is buried on the earth and he still remained there in that grave. Max, the, the initiator and the founder of communism, he too he died and his body still remained here on the, world, on the earth. But, the, but Christianity is the only religion which claims to have a living originator. That is our Lord Jesus Christ. If Christ had not been risen out of the grave, then Christianity would have no stand at all, or no history at all. So I would uh, dare to say that Christianity is standing on the solid foundation, truth, foundational truth of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. So resurrection is far more important subject in the New Testament perspective. I would like to gi give you nine different evidences which the Bible gives us toward the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ or toward the historicity of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. The first evidence is found in Matthew chapter 28 verse 6. Here we listen the announcement by the angels which they announced the, the woman who sought the body of the Lord Jesus Christ at the top. They said, he is not here for he is risen as he said. This is the first announcement that the women have heard from those holy angels who were sitting one on the head side and the other one on the foot side in the tomb and they together announced this woman that he is not here for he is risen as he said. Come see the place where the Lord lay. Come and see the place where the Lord lay. So this has been the first announcement of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ and that was by the angels who were guarding the tomb there. Along with this reference also we read from Luke chapter 24 verse 3. And they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. We know that as the woman communicated the, this uh, resurrection phenomena to the disciples of Lord Jesus Christ and they came together. And uh, maybe perhaps Peter he jumped into the, into the tomb though it has not been written there. We assume that they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus Christ in the tomb because the body was not there, it was already resurrected. So we have the resurrection from the Bible is the empty tomb. That tomb is lying naked even for the last 20, 20 centuries. If I say a little more further that there is only one tomb where a dead person was buried, lay, na lay naked or lay open, is the tomb of our Lord Jesus Christ. All other religious leaders or uh, uh, social revol revol revolutionaries or uh, any other people who born to this world, lived in this world in their lifespan and then they died and their bodies are buried and still it remains there on their respective sepulchres. But only the tomb of the Lord Jesus Christ lay naked or lay empty because he is not here. The Bible, the angels announce here, he is not here for he is risen as he said. 
the second evidence is found in Luke's Gospel, chapter, Matthew's Gospel, chapter 28, verse 5 to 6, and Luke chapter 24, 5 to 7. These verses we read that, Why seek ye the living among the dead? Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. He is not here, but is risen. Remember, how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, and be crucified, and the third day rise again. When Jesus Christ was in his Galilean ministry, prior to his arrest and crucifixion, that Jesus reminded his disciples that he would be caught up by the men in Jerusalem, and they will crucify him, but on the third day he will rise up from the grave. When Jesus Christ himself, he announced this truth to the dear woman who visited his tomb, he said that, you know, Go and tell my disciples and also to Peter that uh, I am risen or I have risen out of the grave as I have told them before. So we have the testimony of the angels and the empty tomb. These are the two evidences of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And third one, again we see people who talk to him after the resurrection. Peter, Mary, Cleopas and Thomas. These are the four people who had uh, talk to the Lord Jesus Christ after his resurrection. They personally experienced the truth that Jesus Christ was risen out of the grave. Fourthly, when we read through the New Testament pages, we also understand that Jesus ate and drank food and, uh, and water after his resurrection with his disciples, which showed his, and also he showed his wounds to his disciples saying, Look at my hand and see the nail prints or the print of the nails on my hand. See, the disciples were very, very well convinced that Jesus Christ was out of the grave in his bodily form and they witnessed the bodily resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and he ate with them, with them and drank with them and also showed them his hands and his side which are beards the print of the nails and the print wound of the spear which he had to suffer on the cross of Calvary. That is the fourth evidence of his resurrection. Now may I say the fifth one. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 6 says, After that he was seen of above 500 brethren at once. After that he was seen of 500 brethren at once of whom the greater part remain under this present, but some are fallen asleep. We know that Apostle Paul is composing these lines in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 is a resurrection chapter in which that, you know, uh, psychologically, scientifically, philosophically, uh, logically, and in every respect of arguments that Paul is attempting to prove that resurrection is a historic fact. And wherein when Apostle Paul explains that, you know, Jesus Christ after his resurrection, he appeared to his disciples, he appeared to, appeared to Cleophas, appeared to Thomas, appeared to Peter, and appeared to Mary, and appeared to several other people. And he also says at last, he appeared to, or he was seen of about 500 brethren, at once of whom the greater part remain unto this present, present, but some are fallen asleep. That means, it, its simplest meaning is that when Apostle Paul was writing to Corinthians, his first letter, even to that time, some people, or, or, or a 500 people, that whom Jesus had his appearance, yeah, after his resurrection, many of them, few of them had already fallen asleep, but many of them were still remaining there, and uh, Paul is witnessing to that fact. So, his appearance was, uh, witnessed by over 500 people at once or together in Galilee where he appeared to them. And sixthly we read by his appearance to Stephen at his martyrdom, Acts chapter 7 verse 56 where uh, St uh, the Dr. Luke when he writes the martyrdom of uh, the first martyr uh, Stephen, he tells there and said behold I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Stephen was, Stephen was torn to death as he was 
at the whim of death and passing away or his uh, uh, giving giving out his uh, his life for uh, for good that and he said that i saw i behold see the heavens were opened and the son of man standing on the right hand of god so stephen's witness of the resurrection of christ and his ascension is another evidence that christ is risen from the dead and next to one seven by his appearance to paul on the damascus road acts chapter 9 verse 5 we read, we read that paul was a very very serious man you know he know he out of his curiosity to find out things in damascus that he went with his people taking permission from the high priest at the at the sadducees and he marched toward the gates of damascus to find if if he find any christians there confessing the faith about the lord jesus christ that he would tie them and bring them back to jerusalem and kill them having interrogated of their faith as he was approaching closer to the gate of damascus that we know in acts chapter 9 verse 1 to 15 the light that overshadowed him that uh, succeeded the light of the the midday sun and uh, at that uh, lightning that you know paul was the soul of tarsus was converted by the risen lord jesus christ and he also heard a voice speaking to him soul soul why are thou persecuting me never in his, never in his lifetime that he had retorted asking him that who are you lord but here at this instant that the soul of tarsus retorted and asked him who are thou lord that jesus said i am jesus of nazareth whom you persecuted listen here so what i want to say at the conversion site of apostle paul or saul of tarsus at the gate of damascus that he the lord jesus christ the risen lord appeared to him and he saw him paul himself uh, witnessed to this fact big in 1 corinthians chapter 15 verse 7 at last he also appeared to me one which was born out of time he says that was he was speaking about the resurrection their post resurrection appearance of jesus christ to apostle paul himself at last he also appeared unto me one which was born out of time so that paul is uh, witnessing personally and eighthly by the testimony of millions who have proved him to be a living savior not only his disciples not only the friends who followed him not only apostle apostle uh, uh, paul formerly known as the soul of tarsus an arch enemy of christianity and not only uh, stephen as martyrdom and even paul at his conversion but several hundred thousands of people down through the ages they witness through witness through their words that jesus have, has been resurrected from the grave by the by change that have happened in their life and finally in acts chapter 1 verse 3 but many infallible proof the apostle luke says that we have many unfail un unfailable uh, proof to the resurrection of our lord jesus christ luke has written about it in the in his gospel narratives and also he says when he was about to write the second gospel or second story of the lord jesus christ then he says that he was speaking there in the book of acts the history or the activity of the risen christ and uh, when he composed the gospels the history and life of the uh, the lived christ or the earthly life of jesus christ so i have said here uh, nine different evidences which prove to the the bodily resurrection of our lord jesus christ the first one is simply top and the second is the witness of the angels of from heaven and uh, thirdly Peter, Mary, Cleophas, and Thomas, who are witnesses, and uh, fourthly, Jesus had eaten and uh, drunk, eaten food and drunk, drunk and drunken uh, the, the drinks or, or or water with the disciples after his resurrection. And fifthly, he after all the after after that he appeared himself to over 500 men in Galilee, and then sixthly, he appeared to Stephen at his martyrdom. And then comes to Paul at, at the road of Damascus, and then we have the testimony of millions and millions of people who triumphantly were witnessing for the resurrection of Jesus Christ because how it the resurrection factor have influenced their life and changed their lifestyle. And finally, by many infallible proof which the narratives of the Gospels have given us, and even the 
eyewitnesses have presented us in the Holy Bible, which is that tells us that Jesus Christ was risen out of the grave on the third day, having buried them in the grave. Okay, I will again tell you the resurrection body, how it looked like. The resurrection body of Jesus Christ. See, fivefold uh, uh, explanations I would like to give in this that, that respect. Many a time the people used to ask me in my doubting Chaco, the questionnaires uh, group, uh, I have answered them several times. People used to ask me that how did the body of the Lord look like when he had risen out of the grave? Okay, I would say, the first of all, it, it had flesh and bones. The resurrection body of Jesus Christ had flesh and bone, the Bible tells us. Luke chapter 24 verse 39 teaches us, Behold, my hands and my feet, that it is I myself, handle me and see, for a spirit hath no flesh and bones, as he see me have. The disciples were frightened having seen the post-resurrection appearance of Jesus Christ and they assumed that it was a demon. Or they assumed it was a demon and they were frightened terribly. But then Jesus came forward and asked them to behold my hands, my feet, that it is I myself, handle me and see, for a spirit has no flesh and bones, as ye see me have. That means the resurrection body of Jesus Christ had necessarily the flesh and bones. The same body which was buried in the in the grave of yours was present here with the flesh and bones so the resurrection body will have the flesh and bones it is very essentially a truth statement which the lord himself has spoken to his disciples as they were standing frightened at the appearance of our lord jesus christ and second proof i want to tell you it was a glorious body the resurrection body was not only a body which contains the flesh and bones but also it was a glorious body. Philippians chapter 3 verse 21. Here the apostle Paul says that who shall change our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body. And he shall change our vile body fashioned like unto his glorious body. So it is very clear and spectacular from this portion of the word that the Lord Jesus Christ was risen from the grave in a, in a glorified body. Not in a terrestrial body. The terrestrial body was buried, but the celestial body was risen. This is the same application philosophy that Apostle Paul applies in 1 Corinthians 15 when he talk about the resurrection, possibility of the resurrection of the saints who believes in Jesus Christ. Where Apostle Paul says that you know, we, we saw something that is terrestrial, but we reap something that is celestial. And terrestrial body is, you know, it is a decomposable body. That means it can be decomposed to the soil, but the celestial is not like that. It is not succumbable to such a frustration. We'll have to understand that truth. So, first of all, the resurrection body of Jesus Christ had flesh and bones, whereas the demons, they do not have flesh and bones. As the disciples of Jesus were frightened by the appearance of the Lord, just assuming him to be a demon, Jesus said that now, Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself, handle me and see me, for a spirit hath no flesh and bones, as ye see me have. That means, it very clearly tells us that Jesus had a human flesh and bones, even after his resurrection. And secondly, it was a glorious body. That body was, you know, beyond pain, beyond diseases, beyond death, and beyond any human succumbility. That we have to understand and various other proofs we have from the Bible and because of the laxity of time I cannot take all the references pertaining to this but you understand that it was a body of flesh and bones and secondly it was a glorious body and thirdly it was an immortal body so you and I have mortal bodies that means we are mortal beings the Bible tells us that we are mortal beings and one, someday when we are succumbed to death that we will Say goodbye to this world and our life here on the world is over. Say, the body which Jesus regained at the resurrection was immortal one. One that will never die. The word immortal means one that will never die. That means it's not at all succumbable to death. That is the idea. 
Romans chapter 6 verse 9 tells that tells us that knowing that Christ being raised from the dead death death no more death hath no more dominion over him that means Jesus conquered death on the cross of Calvary by giving up his body to death as we all we are reminded of that we know that the death was the weapon of Satan with which that Satan was marching uh, or leading hundreds of thousands of men into the hellfire here we know that God as God in his existence that he cannot die he is immortal God from everlasting that was the reason that Jesus Christ the Christ took the form of a man that uh, came to this physical body so that he should experience death where it says that he you know, finally he took upon himself the very weapon of Satan and he defeated Satan or conquered Satan and his host on the cross of Calvary by giving up his body as a sacrificial death for our sake. So it was a, an immortal body. That is the third proof of the resurrection body. And fourthly, it was a spiritual body. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 15 verse 44 tells us that it is on a natural body and it is raised a spiritual body. Say Jesus' uh, physical body was sown in the grave of Joseph of Arimathea, and when he when the body was returned in resurrection, he got it a spiritual body. It was not a physical body, but it was a spiritual body. And finally, the spirit body has the ability to pass through a solid wall. John chapter twenty verse nineteen. So this much evidence we have the for for the we have for the resurrection body of Jesus Christ. Number one. It was a body of flesh and uh, bones. Number two, it was a body, glorious body. And number three, it was an immortal body. And number four, it was a spiritual body. And finally, uh, number five, the spiritual body had the ability to pass through the solid wall as it is mentioned in John's Gospel, chapter 20, verse 90. It tells us that then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. We remember the historic background of these words that Jesus Christ was dead and he was buried. The disciples were all frightened that they shut the door and they were kept inside the room and they may, maybe they, were, maybe they, they might have been praying. No, not knowing that what to do in the next. But you know, while the Lord being shut, we know that the Lord Jesus Christ stood in their midst and uh, lifting his hands, showing them his palm, he said, Peace be unto you. Say these disciples at the very sight they were frightened, but Jesus said, Peace be unto you. Fear not. It is I am. Fear not. It is I am. So the spirit body we understand from this phenomenon that it has the ability or the power to pass through the solid wall while the door is being closed. So these are the fivefold, uh, fivefold description about the resurrected body. Since the Lord Jesus Christ has been risen out of the grave in such a way, uh, we also believe that Bible says that the same God who has raised the Lord Jesus Christ in the grave. Uh, This is what it happens in our country, what to do. Okay, we have learned that five different characteristics, characteristics of the body of Jesus Christ after his resurrection. It had body, flesh and bones, and it was a glorious body, and then it was an immortal body, it was a spiritual body, and the spirit body has the ability to pass through a solid wall or any other, uh, any other hardship. So this is what we understand about the resurrection body of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now we will think, 
two more important factors in this relation and uh, next one is that how did jesus rise from the dead this has been a question long been people asking about how did jesus rise from the dead we i have three answers i have found out from the bible number one is by the power of the father god that means god the father had raised him from the dead acts chapter 2 verse 23 and 4 apostle peter says by wicked hands he was crucified and slain whom god has raised up that means he was crucified by the wicked hands whom god god had raised him that means jesus christ was raised up from the dead by god the father that is the first answer so that is true and secondly by the power of christ himself john's gospel chapter 2 verse 19 tells us jesus answered and said unto them destroy this temple and in three days i will raise it up also the same statement we see in john's gospel 10 verse 18 that means if you kill me i shall be resurrected on the third day that means uh, how did jesus raise rise from the dead the answer is three number one is that he was raised by the power of god the father that means the almighty god raised him up from the dead and secondly he was raised himself by his own power john's gospel chapter 2 verse 19 jesus said you crumble down this temple or destroy this temple and uh, in three days i will raise it up and this is this this was the accusation that the the jews jews people they uh, brought before uh, pontius pilate saying that this man said us that the hero the great had built us this temple in 46 years of span but he said that you crumble it down this temple and i shall build it up in three days so this was a false witness that they bore against the lord jesus christ but jesus was speaking about his own body which is the temple so he was risen out of the grave by his own power and thirdly by the power of the holy spirit of god 1 peter 3 verse 18 being put to death in the flesh but kicking by the spirit being put into death in the flesh but kicking by the spirit so i would say if somebody is asking me the question how did jesus rise from the dead the answer is very clear that he was raised by god the father and he was raised from by himself and then he was raised by the everlasting holy spirit so when it comes to the resurrection of jesus christ all the three persons in the entire trinity had a participation in it that means god the father raised him and the son was raised himself and the holy spirit of god raised him from the dead so triune god raised the lord jesus christ from the from christ from him from from the grave is the right answer i could direct in this respect and finally i want to tell you also the results of the resurrection of jesus christ what are the various results of the resurrection of our lord jesus christ six answers are there i would uh, uh, tell it one one after the other number one is actually the resurrection of jesus christ proves the existence of god that means he said that i am god who have come down to this world i am the lord or god who have manifested in the flesh jesus laid himself that was the reason that the jewish people several times wanted to stone him unto death because he was ascribing calumny upon him saying that he was blaspheming himself because god is only one person and he identified himself equal with god and therefore the jews people were angry at him now jesus jesus resurrection it proves us the existence of god and tells us that there is one true living god and if there is no god how did christ rise from the dead is the question he rose because a living god resurrected him that means if there is no god that god cannot be resurrected out of the grave so the bible says that jesus christ was resurrected from the grave that means that jesus christ is god and god raised him from the dead and secondly in the resurrection of christ proves the deity of christ and bible tells us that especially john in his gospel he speaks about the deity of our lord jesus christ john's gospel chapter 1 romans chapter 1 verse 4 the apostle paul says and declared to be the son of god with the power by the resurrection from the dead see he was born in the flesh in the order of the lineage of david that is true but he was risen you know he was declared to be the son of god with power by the resurrection from the dead that when jesus christ came up from the dead he was proclaiming or declaring himself that he is the son of god he is the god, he is the 
eternal son of God. So it proves the existence of God and it also proves his deity. And thirdly, it means that salvation is <coughs> an accomplished fact. Salvation is an accomplished fact. So Jesus said that salvation was completed when he died on the cross and the resurrection confirms it. When Jesus Christ was dying on the cross, and as he said, he saw that everything was fulfilled. Having seen that everything was fulfilled, he said, it is accomplished. The last word. It is accomplished. What it is accomplished? The root word, the Greek language which is used for the term. Accomplished, I was searching for and I found it. The meaning from the lexicon. That it shows a word, you know, an action began in the, in the ages past. Continued through the, through the history or continued through the ages. And uh, culminated at a moment. Say, listen here. The salvation plan in the heart, loving heart of the Almighty God has been, you know, initiated in the eternity past. And it was, it, 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 was, it was going on through the ages or it was coming through the ages and now culminated at the, on the cross at the death of the Lord Jesus Christ. So it is the meaning of the term is actually an action begun in the, age, in the eternity, ages past, continued through the ages and culminated now in the time. So... When Jesus Christ knew that everything was accomplished, he said, it is accomplished. It is accomplished. That means salvation was accomplished. Now, the resurrection has confirmed it. That means nothing more to be added to the saving work which the Lord Jesus Christ has done on the cross of Calvary by his sacrificial death. So, resurrection confirms the salvation was perfected. And fourthly, the resurrection guarantees that everyone else shall rise too. Apostle Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15, when he is, uh, narrates the concept of the resurrection phenomena, he says that since God has raised him from the from among the dead, that we shall also be risen out of the grave. That means, you know, that means Christ's resurrection is a guarantee for every born again believer that he also will be one day resurrected from the grave and will have lived everlastingly. And so, therefore, there are twofold resurrection which is mentioned in the Bible. That is resurrection of the righteous and the resurrection of the unrighteous. Okay, that is, this is not the time to explain that, those things. The, I am telling you that resurrection guarantees for the resurrection of both the, uh, both the uh, righteous, that means believers and the unbelievers, or both the righteous and the unrighteous. And fifthly, the resurrection of Jesus Christ prepares him to fulfill his next promise. I will come again. Having the, the Lord Jesus Christ after his resurrection, he said that he will come again. So last 2000 years, the history of mankind, every human being who are born again and who are regenerated by the precious blood of Jesus Christ, by his faith in the substitute death of Christ on the cross of Calvary, we have been anticipating for the glorious coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. If Christ had not been raised, risen from the dead, that is coming back, that is return is impossible. But Bible says that he is risen out of the grave on the third day when he was buried at the grave. And uh, last 2000 years, that 20th century, all the born again believers were uh, hopefully expecting or anticipating for his glorious advent. And we are still waiting for his glorious coming. And finally, the power of his resurrection, Philippians 3 10, the power of his resurrection is an. Uh, experience that we may enjoy now it means living in newness of life that comes to us by the resurrected christ living his life anew through our bodies that means now you and i are experiencing the power of the resurrection of the lord jesus christ this is essential for our victorious christian living we are living in the in the flesh living in this world we are not being not yet being redeemed from the power of sin because the presence of sin is still with us and therefore, there may be, we are prone to commit any sins because we are living in the flesh. The weaknesses of the flesh is always dominating in our lives because we are still living under the power and the presence of sin. We are being only redeemed from the penalty of sin. So, so long that we, you and I are remind here on the world and we are living in this world, we need to understand one factor that one day, until the moment that uh, we are being redeemed and we are being transformed unto the very image of the Lord Jesus Christ, which he had put on at his resurrection body, that uh, we may have the possibility to plow in sin. But Bible tells us that, you know, in order to have a victorious Christian living, 
that we need to have we need to appropriate the resurrection power of our lord jesus christ christ in our day to day life the for which we have to yield our body our soul under the altar of the love of the lord jesus christ in a constant and a continuous way so this morning i have been telling teaching you the 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 doctrinal aspects of the evidence of the resurrection of our lord jesus christ that ninefold evidence is i presented then i said the the characteristics of the resurrection body five fold it had a flesh and bones that it was a glorious body and it was an immortal body it was a spiritual body and a body who, which was capable to pass through a solid wall basing the text and reference support john's gospel chapter 20 verse 19 and then we learn that how did jesus rise from the dead father god raised him and christ raised himself himself up and then the eternal spirit of god raised him from the dead and finally we have meditated upon the results of the resurrection six major results i said now first of all the resurrection of jesus christ uh, proves to the existence of a personal god who is the creator and the owner of this entire thing and secondly the resurrection of jesus christ also proves the deity of the lord jesus christ and thirdly it means that salvation is an accomplished fact because what christ accomplished by his sacrifice on the cross of calvary was confirmed forever by his resurrection and fourthly resurrection guarantees everyone else will be resurrected both the wicked and the believers and fifthly it proves is full uh, proves to fulfill his next promise that i will come again he said and we are anticipating for his glorious coming and then finally the power of his resurrection that we are enjoying in our day to day christian life in this days for our victorious christian life so let me close down here this lesson christianity is not a blind belief it solely standing upon the found soul historic foundation of the resurrection of our lord jesus christ so there is only one religion in the entire world which can claim the originator living that is the lord jesus christ we are not serving or believing a dead god but we are living we are serving and believing in a god who is living forever and he himself testified that i was dead and i been and risen forever and he is an eternally resurrected son of god and upon his foundation on this truth and this historic foundation the church which is his bride is standing now and they are getting developed may the lord help us to continue this study as the lord enables us in this coming and uh, also confirm confirm help us to confirm our belief and trust in the lord jesus christ as a living savior who was resurrected out of the grave thank you for joining with me this morning this uh, bible class and uh, may god bless each of you and help you meditate upon these lessons which you have learned this morning and uh, thankfully i express my love and concern to all of my dear friends who have been here this morning with me may god bless you thank you thanking you in you in christ service Uh, uh, the evangelist uh, Titus from Edinburgh. Let God's name be glorified. Thank you.